can you inherit depression or bipolar disorder? That's what I'm going to be talking about today. I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I publish weekly videos on mental health education and self-improvement. Click the subscribe button if you don't want to miss a, a video and the notification button. This video is based on a viewer question from Janie. Thank you, Janie. And here's the question. I have bipolar one disorder when, and I was diagnosed when I was 24 and now I'm 59. I'm a mother of three children of their own. And what are the chances that any one of my grandchildren could end up with bipolar? Here's what I told Janie. For bipolar disorder, there's a lifetime risk of a half to 1% for anyone, whether you have a relative with it or not. If you have a first degree relative with the disorder, the risk goes up to 15 to 30 percent. What does that mean? Let me explain. The genetics with most illnesses do not follow Mendelian genetics. Mendelian genetics is what you learned in science class where you can predict a certain trait based on what, the, what traits the parents have. The easiest example of a disorder that results from Mendelian genetics or follows it is sickle cell anemia. And here's how it works. And this is a, a basic quick primer on genetics. It's not all inclusive. Sickle cell anemia represents a genetic mutation on a gene responsible for producing red blood cells. Each person has two chromosomes that have this gene on it. You get one from your father and one from your mother. You need two copies of the mutated gene to have sickle cell. So if you do not have sickle cell anemia, you either have two normal genes or one in one on each chromosome or one normal chromosome and one mutated chromosome. So let's say two people have a child and the husband has sickle cell anemia and the wife does not, but she's a carrier of the mutated gene. If these two people have a child, there's four possible pairings that can take place but there's two possible outcomes. This couple has a 50% chance of having a child who is a carrier and a 50% chance of having a child with sickle cell anemia. What's this got to do with bipolar? This is just to show you how basic inheritance works when there's an illness that's the result from a single genetic mutation. Bipolar disorder and depression can't be predicted like this. We don't know exactly how the disorder comes about, but it's thought to be a combination of several genetic variations that come together to increase the risk of developing the disorder. So how would we even know what the risk is? One of the ways we estimate risk is by studying families and twins. Twin studies give good information because twins share the same DNA, but not all twins develop the same illnesses. So back to the risk. It matters if the relative who has the disorder is first degree or second degree. A first degree relative is someone who shares 50% of your DNA, and this would be a parent or a sibling. A second degree relative is someone with whom you, sh you share 25% of your DNA, and this would be a grandparent, uncle, aunt, niece, or nephew you have a higher chance of developing the disorder if a first degree relative has it, and less of a chance if it's a second degree relative. So with bipolar disorder, anyone has a 1% chance of developing bipolar disorder, but if, you're, if your parent or sibling has the disorder, your risk increases to about 15%. If you have two first degree relatives with it, like your mother and your brother, your risk increases up to 75% of developing it yourself. Major depression or unipolar depression is thought not to be as inherited as bipolar disorder, meaning it's not quite as passed down as strongly as bipolar disorder is. Unipolar depression means that you have depressive episodes, but you don't have any manic episodes, but it still runs in families and the risk in the general population for anyone to develop major depression is between eight and 16%. So that's a higher percentage than bipolar disorder. That means more people actually have uh, major depression than do bipolar disorder. If you have a first degree relative with depression, that risk 
increases about two to four times, which is 16 to 15% chance of you getting depression yourself at some point in your lifetime. What's the final answer? The final answer is if you have a parent or sibling with either depression or bipolar disorder, you are at greater risk of developing the disorder yourself, but it doesn't automatically mean you will get it. It just means that you more than someone else um, may have a disorder at some point in your life, but so your risk is greater than just someone in the general population, but it's not an automatic. And to directly answer Janie's question, who's asking about her grandchild, because your grandchild is second degree, what's more important really is whether or not your daughter is affected. So yes, your grandchildren have a greater chance than someone in just the general population without a relative with the disorder, but it's not as great if your daughter is not affected. Another tidbit here is that just as these disorders can run in families, responses to medications can also run in families. So if you have depression and your sister has it and she's doing well on a certain medication, there's a good chance that that drug could be a good choice for you. And this could be a helpful starting point for your doctor in choosing a medication. There's so many options for medications out there, but having a relative do well on one is a good place for you to start and a good reason to choose that one for yourself. If this is your first video with me, check out my other videos on bipolar disorder and depression and leave me a comment or, or a question if you have one or just to say hi. I like highs. See you next time. <laughs>